In the event of an influenza pandemic, healthcare and other ancillary workers may be required to wear disposable high filtration masks, such as P2 or N95 respirators. To ensure maximum safety and protection of the user, these masks must be selected to suit the individual's facial structure, put on correctly, successfully fit checked, and fit tested for the individual. The Australian New Zealand standard Selection, use and maintenance of respiratory protective devices advises employers to provide a fit testing process. Fit testing is a validated method of matching a specific respirator mask to an individual face. A fit check is a quick check to ensure the mask is fitted correctly at the time of use. Fit checking does not negate the need for a fit test. A person may be able to achieve a successful fit check with a selected mask. However, this may not translate to a passed fit test. There are two fit testing methods identified by Standards Australia. Qualitative, often referred to as the Hood method, and quantitative, for example, as used by the Port Account Plus with N95 companion instrument. When using either method, you should comply with Australian standards and the manufacturer's instructions. There are advantages and disadvantages for both fit testing methods. Advantages of the qualitative method include relatively inexpensive to purchase, able to be made with readily available materials, it is easily transportable. Disadvantages include it is a subjective test that relies on the ability of the person being tested to taste a solution that is aerosolized within the hood. The person being tested may provide inaccurate information to the fit tester. It can be an unpleasant and messy procedure. Advantages of the quantitative method include it is an objective test using an instrument to measure the particle count behind the mask. The results do not rely on responses from the person being tested. Provision of an electronic record that can be stored and printed can be used as an educational tool to demonstrate the effectiveness of the fit of the mask. Disadvantages include it is a relatively expensive instrument, it can be cumbersome to transport. Regardless of the method used, you can increase the chances of a successful fit test if the person being tested has had previous experience with using a disposable P2 or N95 mask. However, the lack of previous experience should not be a deterrent to performing a fit test. The fit tester should always use the fit testing time to reinforce correct procedure for fitting and removing a mask. Protective eyewear can affect the seal and or fit of the mask. For this reason, protective eyewear should be worn when fit tests are performed to ensure the protection provided by the mask is not compromised when wearing this equipment. Both the qualitative and quantitative methods require the person being tested to perform a standard set of activities. Whilst this is being done, the fit tester or fit testing instrument assesses if there is any indication of leaks around the seal of the mask. There are a total of eight activities. Normal breathing, deep breathing, head side to side, head up and down, talking out loud, grimacing, bending forward, and normal breathing. These simulate the facial movements and activities that may occur whilst performing your normal duty. Qualitative testing requires the use of an enclosed transparent hood testing solutions and atomizers. The effectiveness of this test relies upon the person's ability to taste either a sweet or bitter solution. The person should abstain from eating, drinking and smoking for 30 minutes prior to the test, as this may affect taste. Contraindications for this method are known allergies to the testing solution, a history of claustrophobia and or an inability to taste either a sweet or bitter solution. Prior to commencing the test, 
the ability of the person to taste the solution is determined. The hood is placed over the head and a low concentration solution is atomized into the hood via the access window. The tester continues to spray the solution into the hood until the person being tested can taste it. The number of sprays required for this to occur is then documented, the result being rounded up to the nearest 10. If the person is unable to taste the solution after 30 sprays, an alternate testing solution will be required. On completion of this stage, the hood is removed and cleaned, and the person cleans their face and either rinses out their mouth or has a drink of water. The person now puts on the mask that has been selected for them, performs a fit check, and the hood is placed over their head. A stronger concentration of solution is used to perform the fit test. The tester now atomizes the same number of sprays into the hood that was recorded as the threshold, for example, 10. The person then performs the standard set of activities. During this time, the tester sprays the solution into the hood at six second intervals. To pass the fit test, the person must be able to indicate that they have not tasted the solution. If they have, mask selection needs to be reassessed and a repeat fit test scheduled. Document the fit test result and place in the employee records. The employee should be provided with a record of the fit test result, including details of the brand, model and size of the mask fitted, and a sample provided so they can practice the correct procedure for putting on and removing this type of mask. This procedure takes approximately 20 minutes to complete. More detailed instructions for this method are available from Australian New Zealand Standard 1715 1994 Selection, Use and Maintenance of Respiratory Protective Devices and Manufacturers of Commercially Available Kits. This concludes the presentation of mask selection and fit testing.